Hello, my name is Kennedy Rolak, and I'm going to be taking you through the life of Yves Saint Laurent. Starting with Yves Saint Laurent's early life, he was born August 1st, 19, 1936 in Oran, Algeria, and he died June 1st, 2008 at the age of 71 in Paris, France. His parents were Charles and Lucien André Matthew Saint Laurent. He had two younger sisters, Michelle and Bridget. Um, his family was pretty well off, as his father was a lawyer and insurance broker who also owned a chain of cinemas. In his school life, he was actually bullied quite a bit for appearing to be homosexual, and most of the time he would fall sick from being so nervous of going to school that he would actually spend most of his days at home instead of school. Growing up, he liked to create paper dolls, and in his teen years, he started designing dresses for his mother and his sisters. And at the age of 17, where his whole fashion career kind of began, his mother took him to Paris for a meeting that she had arranged with Michael de Brunhoff, the editor of French Vogue. With his timeline, he was born August 1st, 1936 in Oran, Algeria. And then jumping to 1953, at the age of 16, Yves Saint Laurent won third prize in the International Wool Secretariat Design Competition. This competition was founded in 1936 to promote wool to the global market. And in 1955, Saint Laurent was introduced to Christian Dior by the editor of French Vogue, Michael de Brunhoff. In 1957, Christian Dior dies of a heart attack and Yves Saint Laurent became Dior's successor as per his wishes. Saint Laurent is now the artistic director of the hot, of the hot Couture House at the age of 21. In 1958, as the artistic director for Dior, YSL debuts his first collection, which is a line of trapeze dresses, which we will actually go more in depth on in a later slide because the trapeze dress has become one of YSL's most iconic garments and what first set him apart as a designer. In 1960, YSL comes out with his beatnik collection, which we will actually also discuss more in depth later on. Saint Laurent is also drafted, drafted into the French army in the same year where he spent less than a month before he ended up being sent to a military hospital due to hazing. While at the hospital, Saint Laurent learns that he has been fired from Dior. In 1961, Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Burge opened their own couture house in Paris. In 1962, YSL introduces his first collection for his couture house in Paris. And this is also the year that Yves Saint Laurent introduced the peacoat as a high fashion garment. In 1964, YSL launched Why by Yves Saint Laurent, a fragrance for women. In 1965, he comes out with his Mondrian dresses line that contain abstract geometrics and was actually inspired by a Dutch painter. In 1966, YSL comes out with the first women's tuxedos in one of his collections. In 1967, Yves Saint Laurent comes out with an illustrated book that takes a look at his life and also his couture house. In 1971, he comes out with a wartime-inspired collection that actually sparked a lot of scandal and outrage all across Paris. In 1972, Saint Laurent and Burge buy a fashion house from Squibb Drug Company for $1.1 million. In 1974, they move their couture house to 5 Avenue Marceau in Paris, and in 1977, the launch of opium fragrance occurs. Moving all the way to 1983, YSL has a show at the Metropolitan Museum in New York, and it was actually the first museum exhibition devoted to a living designer. In 1986, YSL has a Paris retrospective in a Paris textile museum, and in 1987, YSL has another retrospective at the Hermitage State Museum in St. Petersburg. In 1989, the YSL brand goes public on the Paris Bourse, which is the Paris Stock Exchange, and the brand was valued at $500 million. In 1993, Saint Laurent told, sold his couture house to Sanofi, a branch of Elf Aquitaine, for $650 million. And in 1996, Yves Saint Laurent turned 60 years old. In 1998, YSL hands over his ready-to-wear collections to Elber Elbes due to his growing health conditions. In 1999, Elbes is replaced by Tom Ford, who comes from Gucci. And soon after that, the YSL brand is sold to Gucci Group for $1 billion. 
In 2000, the Yves Saint Laurent Archive Institute is founded in Paris. And in 2002, Saint Laurent celebrates 40 years of his fashion career in its couture house. Soon after that, the couture part of YSL is closed, though. In 2004, Tom Ford leaves YSL and is replaced by Stefano Pilati. And come 2008, after growing health problems, Yves Saint Laurent sadly passes away on June 1st. Moving to 2013, Francesca Bellatini is appointed the CEO and president of the YSL company and continues Yves Saint Laurent's legacy. In 2015, the Yves Saint Laurent brand rejoins the couture arm of the business once again. Moving on to iconic garments, uh, starting with the trapeze dress, which we touched on earlier in the timeline. Um, during his time at Dior, YSL debuted his line of trapeze dresses. This was his first collection in 1958, and this is what this is the garment that really set him apart from other designers and really made people pay attention to him and his work. These dresses had a flowing silhouette, as you can see, and a free waist. These dresses were a rework of Christian Dior's new look silhouette that is just a bit less restrictive to wear, and during this time it was a huge success. Next is the safari jacket. YSL launched his first safari jacket in 1968, and this was inspired by his Algerian origins and upbringing. YSL introduced the safari jacket as very high fashion, and he would often show this safari jacket for his couture collections. This is one of YSL's most iconic and signature styles, so to this day, the creative director of YSL actually reinterprets this jacket in several ways, silhouettes, and styles. Next, we have the Mondrian dress. Yves Saint Laurent launched his collection containing Mondrian dresses that were inspired by the Dutch painter Piet Mondrian in his fall-winter 1965 collection. These dresses specifically reference Piet Mondrian's 1929 painting of Composition II in red, blue, and yellow. This became one of, one of YSL's most famous and iconic garments to this day, and during this time it was considered very high fashion to be wearing one of these Mondrian dresses. Next we have the La Smoking. YSL introduced the first tuxedos made for women, the La Smoking suits, in his fall-winter 1966 collection. The suit was meant to be worn to protect clothing from the smell of cigarettes and smoke in a smoking room, and the suit kept the distinctions of a men's suit, as you can see, but went through some modifications to better fit and complement the female body. Next, we have the beatnik style. YSL launched his beatnik collection in the 1963 fall winter at Christian Dior and also for his own label. One of his most iconic pieces in this collection was a black crocodile mink trimmed motorbike jacket, which is the left picture. The, this collection reflected a rebellious and defiant style, such as motorcycle jackets, crocodile leather, and thigh-high boots. Moving on to visual aesthetics, Yves Saint Laurent throughout his career dabbled in quite a bit of aesthetics. He created tuxedos for women, geometric dresses, uh, a safari themed collection, and he also had an edgier style. YSL has covered many bases in the realm of fashion design. However, if you were to pull similar aesthetics from each collection and try to see what they all have in common, you would see that they are all they all are quite timeless and extremely chic in one way or another. Specifically talking about colors, YSL liked to work with colors such as the Mondrian dress where he found inspiration from a painting that used the same colors, but he also liked the neutral colors and simply black and white combinations when it came to his designs. So he didn't exactly have one specific color aesthetic when it came to his designs. Talking about shapes and patterns, he worked with geometrics and abstract quite a bit, but other than that, he kept his designs pretty simple, I'd say. Details, when it came to details, Yves Saint Laurent seemed to always find the perfect balance between simple, but they always had a bit of an added flair to them. Overall, to describe the visual aesthetic of Yves Saint Laurent, I would say it would have to be a combination of chic, edgy rock and roll, and also a Parisian French style. Uh, Yves Saint Laurent's target customer, 
Yves Saint Laurent has catered towards very fashion forward people that have a strong and unique sense of style. Some pieces that YSL has designed should or kind of need to be worn by people who do not mind dressing a bit differently and uniquely compared to others. Such as, as you can see in this picture, YSL designed a sheer blouse that would show a woman's chest in 1966. And this was actually the introduction of the nude look. As you can imagine, in 1966, this style of a sheer blouse that would show a woman's chest was probably, you probably wouldn't see it much, if at all. So this brand really does cater to a unique sense of style and somebody who, who is willing to wear something a bit different. Class-wise, YSL targeted middle to upper class women and men, and i say the targeted age is around 20 to 50, give or take. Moving on to retail formats, uh, Saint Laurent is sold in department stores, luxury department stores to be more exact, such as Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom, Neiman Marcus, Bergdorf Goodman, Saks Fifth Avenue. Around the world, there are 78 stores in total, and as of December 2022, 51 of those 78 stores are actually in the United States, with the most stores being in California, Florida, and New York. The third retail format, you can actually order through the YSL website online. Thank you for watching my presentation. I really hope you enjoyed it.